Well, one of my, f my, my favorite ones is A uh, Whole Lot of Love. And, um, and I, I recently realized that uh, you know, a lot of guitar players go... And it's actually not how you play it, because there's the open... <laughs> now it sounds like A Whole Lot of Love, right? So you actually, you play the two. Pull that out of tune. It's cool, right? <laughs> so that's, that's, I mean, come on, you got to throw in a Led Zeppelin riff in there. So, um, of my riffs, I mean, um, you know, uh, Rebel Yell is obviously one that kind of put me on the, on the map. And, and uh, the interesting thing about Rebel Yell is that the we knew that the chord structure was going to be B minor, A, G, very, very basic chord structure. But one of the things I liked about, about this is that I kind of keep this note as the soprano note. And when we go to A, uh, With G, it becomes G major seventh. So I'm never actually playing the bass note. So That's kind of creates a, even though there's a, you know, basically bass, drums, and guitar, it creates much more of a chord uh, arrangement. Yeah. It sounds bigger than the sum of the parts, so that's a cool thing. Um, uh, yeah, um, well, another, another one is obviously... <laughs> And that's, you know, that's, uh, it's, once again, you know, it's just E to D, but uh, you get that kind of, and this is actually from, it's very Who-like, that was my inspiration for it. I love, I love a lot of the Pete Townsend things, Substitute, and all those kind of, you know, um, his Chord, you know, his sus chords and all that kind of, th he was great at arranging his guitar parts. Like Jimmy Page, created a much bigger uh, chord voicing, uh, even for just uh, three instruments. So those guys were masters at that, so. Um, so that's, you know, that's some of my kind of signature things, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, with a full gain uh, amplifier, it's hard to, to, to get things that, uh, you know, with distortion, certain things don't sound great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of, yeah. I mean, one of the, you know, that, you know, that's a G major voicing that, that I kind of use. But um, a lot of times I'll use, um, uh, I'll put the fifth below the chord. So if I'm playing, uh, it just, also creates once again it widens the the voicing so if I'm playing an E I just like having that even if it, you're not really stressing that lower fifth but kind of a cool it sounds it sounds fuller and more meaty from down here with that little added you know little added uh, voicing below it yeah well the one that I always have to warm up during the course of my show I do a uh, 
uh, an unaccompanied solo and one of the things I do, I end up this solo by doing this, it's basically an exercise and I do And that one I usually have to spend a little bit of time just, and it's one of those when, uh, when I don't even have a guitar with me, I can kind of, I can practice it if there's an edge of a table or something, but. also practice without you know it allows you to open the string and also mute it you know you know that's kind of uh, it's just get your hands ready and uh, warms up the muscles and the tendons and all that stuff. Do it for, for, uh, before the gig always? Um, a little bit. I mean, depends. If we get a full sound check in, um, that's usually enough for me to kind of get the guitar on my hands, get used to it. But a lot of times, uh, especially with Billy Idol shows, we don't, we don't always sound check. Uh, and uh, so I'll get a guitar in my hands a couple hours before the show just to kind of get used to it. And, uh, and also, you, uh, as simple as it sounds, just get used to having it on your back, you know, because playing sitting down and or at home, you know, it's different. It's a different, it's a different headspace and a different positioning. So, uh, so I like to at least have the guitar on on my shoulders for a little while before I hit the stage.